Hello and welcome to Flory Models Classic Kit Review Time. So we've got probably one of the probably one of the best known classic kits and for various reasons and things like that. This is the Monogram P40E Warhawk. Also, it's in the Pro Modeler name. Good name. I wish I thought of that some 10 years ago. Anyway, uh, so basically what happened was was that you know, like a lot of companies, like they do now, we've seen that they sort of rebrand their name a little bit. And it's just a way of sort of distancing themselves from some of the older stuff that they maybe have produced before. So it comes into the newer sort of entry. And we've seen it like Kinetic doing Gold Series and things like that at the most recent ones. But a lot of companies have done this one. And Monogram did it with the Pro Modeler series. So with the Pro Modeler ones, they were just that little bit better. You had that sort of finer detail. A lot of their recessed stuff was obviously rebranded with the Pro Modeler name because it was during that period sometimes you've got a little bit of photo etch white metal things like that so forth and so on but this particular kit has always taken my eye because growing up as i did in the sort of 70s and 80s this kit became sort of legendary in that day when we used to look at things in a slightly different light as in rivet counting of being the most accurate because not all models were 100% accurate. A lot of them, they were roughly the right shape. And for 99.95% .95 of us, it's absolutely fine because if it looks right, it's right. But this is one of those few kits where everybody sort of agreed, if you want the best shape, the most accurate kit out there or anything else of a P40, this is the kit you need. And it was sort of universally agreed. It was no, you know, nowadays, I think with social media, it probably get more of a, a heavy time about it, a bit more bashing. But definitely growing up, this is one of those kits. It's probably the most accurate P40 you can get out there and to be honest there's lots of different versions out there and lots and lots of them have come along afterwards as well but I thought it'd be nice to have a look at this sort of legendary kit of being probably one of the most accurate model kits of its day so as you can see usual gorgeous box art as you can see down on here it's the 148 scale kit if I mentioned that already we've got some nice build up bits of information down in there and we've got the bit on here so your kit number for this one was back in the day 5921 and again we've got some more pictures of the different options of it down there and there as well so in the box we are greeted by it's still sealed on one side amazingly and again big thank you to um, Mikey who sent me this one as you can see we've actually got still sealed <laughs> it just breaks my heart to do this, but I need to show you guys, so we will undo it. I can close the box again. There we, go. we have original sealed, factory sealed bags down in here, factory sealed clear parts. We've got the return information as well. The jackals, to be honest, don't look that bad. I think they would probably be usable. Uh, that's face it. I don't probably wouldn't trust them 100%, but they don't look too bad considering what we've seen before. So this is the legend that is we start with the instructions and then we'll we'll work our way through so again with the pro modelers one you had a little bit more of a meaty instruction thing with it but in these particular kits said before you tend to get a lot more information as you can see as we go through in a moment you do get a full detailed instruction booklet with it all right so we've got these black and white reference photos right the way through and obviously it talks about each individual part not just by number but exactly what they are and it gives you a guide um, you know to actually go through so it's saying about you know glue the control column number one into the cockpit floor so it's nice and straightforward to follow as well and again it's got color call outs as well right the way through it to keep you on track as well as you said before some nice photo reference photos right the way through so again usual thing starting off with the cockpit and again for its day beautiful cockpit detail side walls etc right the way through no engine but obviously we've got the exhaust system coming through from the outside we've got that intake system right the way being fitted onto this one and then it's straightforward job of putting these two halves together with that intake system and then the actual cockpit comes up from the floor which is pretty standard even to this day right the way over then it's into the wheel wells so again we've got a couple of different bits down in here for the wheel wells again fully detailed as well wings and assemblies and things like that going on top and again some nice little details down in here showing the lights so you say you can see the actual lights all down in here as well wing section being fitted onto the fuselage and then it's talking about the actual fuel tank and again more details of the actual fuel tank itself and then making its way tailplanes going on there we've got the bracket on the back which you can actually see in the photos down in here which is another really nice touch with it and again some nice references in here onto the gear right the way through including brake lines as you can see on this one and then obviously photos that are going along with it 
and then right the way through it, fitting all of these in, getting the doors installed. And again, you've got nice reference photos showing you the angles the actual doors should be in. And again, right the way through to the propeller. So again, we've actually got the propeller hub and then you've got the spinner cap going on the front of it as well. So again, really nice down in here. And again, right the way through, it's talking about the actual painting guide and the spinners and things like that down in here. And then again, we've got the clear parts all being fitted onto this one. So we've got those rear side windows, the main frame and the front being fitted down in there. And then literally some wiring. So it's showing you where the uh, pitot goes onto this one. And then obviously we've got the antenna wires and their locations showing you just down in there. Again, because it's the pro model one, you get the actual ground crew technicians with it as well. So we get those on. And then again, you get some really nice detailed information down in here about the actual kit decal options as well. So we've got Stardust down in here, uh, which obviously is this one. And then I think the other one was just a, an REF version of it as well. Oh, sorry, Royal Australian Air Force one as well. So again, some very nice stuff down in there. So if we jump in, if we cut open the bag, oh my God, I'm probably doing this, but hey, it has to be done. We do this so you don't have to. So, we are greeted by, now it is raised panel line detail. This isn't one of the recessed ones, but hopefully you'll get the thing to this. So as you can see, really very nice crisp. Even though it's raised, and we've been working with raised uh, kit decals, uh, with raised surface detail recently, uh, on the last build that we actually did, being the actual uh, uh, CF101 uh, Voodoo. And as you can see, really nice indeed. But again, if you're looking at the latches, the, the bolt action, the things like that as well, it really is very nice, very complex molding as well, because we've got that big scoop down in there as well. And obviously we've got the little one on the top being an E variant uh, and not the later end. So again, you can see the different ones down in here. Inside, again, beautifully clean molds, very sharp very nicely molded there's no flash on this nothing else like that the sprue tabs totally acceptable even in today's the rear ones as well so again really very nice for the stabs down here at the back really very nice one piece nice job we've got the main wings say so one piece on the side which is pretty standard today but looking at the detail down in these absolutely beautiful very nicely done. Got a little bit of flash just down here at the back. And again, you've got the maker's mark down in here as well. So again, showing you that this one is 19, let's see what date that is now without my glasses on. Probably see it better on the camera. There we go, 1995. So this would have been one of the last of the raised panel line series, I do believe. So again, very fine. Like these are incredibly fine raised detail. So again, really nice. Again, good clean molds. All the parts also are numbered which is really handy as well. Sometimes you can get a little bit out of step with them, but uh, very nice indeed. So we've got the wheels, and again, ahead of its time, weight on wheels done as well, right the way through. Some of that cockpit detail, cockpit floor, things like that, really nice. Okay, so now we've got the actual tops of the wings and some of the details. So tops of the wings, as you can see, really very nice. Indeed, again, nice details right the way through. Got the seat with molded in harnesses. We've got the fuel tanks. We've got the radiator down in here for the coolers. Uh, for the nose, we've got the spinner nicely done. We've got the prop. And again, interesting how they've molded the prop from one in here. So normally most of them nowadays sort of come in from the sides down in here by the rotations, uh, but they've just done it in one which is quite clever to get something like that out of a, a mold just like that as well. So beautifully done. Again, inside the wheel well detail, you can see down in there. And again, those bigger parts all numbered. Very nice indeed. Then some of the smaller little parts, which I suppose if we just go in this way, you can see we've got the instrument panel up here again. So you've got your dials, the various bits and pieces. We've got the gear legs, very nice indeed. And then obviously we've got those side walls. Down in here, we've got the wheel wells, which we'll flip over in a moment. Um, some of the other little bits, exhausts, things like that. Very nice. And again, the figures. So we've got two crew. We've got the guy standing and the one who's sort of painting if you wanted to do it. Very nice indeed. Again, good, clean, sharp, crisp molding. And then we've got the clear parts. So last up, we have these. And again, 
these are absolutely fantastic these are crystal clear i know there's a little bit of warpage down in there but i mean the actual clarity overall when you've like got your finger inside as you can see is still very very clear and that's what you want but generally when you're thinking of the age of this thing now it's now almost 30 years old not bad at all so again very very nice last up is those decals as you can see they're not too bad at all i think these will actually be usable uh say scale master ones very nice and again good clean probably silk screen printed would have thought back in the day very nice indeed so again very very nice again this is one of those kits where again it's a little bit of a, a nostalgia there's a lot of agains in that but it's a very much a nostalgia trip for me i know this kit i've actually built this kit as a child uh which was a hell of a long time ago now and thoroughly enjoyed it it went together really really well i've got fond memories of actually this kit i don't think it lasted long it probably ended up in a fiery mess in the garden but you know it'd be one of those ones to do definitely do again it's proud of place now in my stash as is obviously we just finished the voodoo which is still sat right here i can prove it it's literally here working on the monogram voodoo uh we did that one as a full video build as you might remember whoops gonna stay uh but yeah it was one of those ones working with raised detail i think a lot of people dismiss it because you think you've got to rescribe it Rescribe Describing isn't as bad as you think. You just take your time with it and you're gentle. You won't have any problems. But sometimes, like when we did the voodoo, it's a case of, do I need to rescribe it? I don't think we do. We can actually work with what we've got and use the details, replace the raised stuff, and you end up with something just as nice. And definitely with the voodoo here, touch it down, it's one of those areas where you have to be so close to it to notice actually it's recessed detail. It's not recessed, it's raised detail. Because again, clever little tricks with shading, things like that, and it comes out absolutely fine. So again, do not be put off by these old kits. Is it still the most accurate P40 out there? I don't know. I'm sure you guys will let me know that one. But definitely, I have very fond memories of it. It's a really, really nice kit. I'm glad it's back in my stash. Anyway, hope you like it. That's the Pro Modelers or Monograms 148 scale P40E Warhawk.